Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to break down the MUDS Soul Defense Bundle, which has been live on PC for about a month and a half now, and is going to be dropping on console tomorrow, August 8th. As always, chapters to each topic are listed down below. So starting off, I am a bit late to talking about this MUDS Bundle. I did talk about it briefly on a news video when it dropped on PC, but if you saw that news video, then you'll know that this is a very unimpressive MUDS Bundle. It broke the really good streak we had going in 2024 for high value MUDS bundles. We had the Disco Inferno one that gave us the Discovery Merc Worker Flight Deck Carriers on Account Wide Unlock. And then we had the Dread Through the Ages bundle, which gave us the TOS Dreads and the Enterprise J variants all on Account Wide Unlock. So we had some really good MUDS bundles this year. And then that streak came to a screeching halt with the Soul Defense bundle. So the ships that this bundle is giving us account-wide are the Saturn Intel Science Spearhead, the United Earth Defense Force Vessel, and the Mars Pilot Escort. These aren't necessarily bad ships, it's just that they are very, very niche. Some of them are a bit outdated at this point, and if these are ships that were relevant to your playstyle, you'd already know about them and have determined if this bundle is worth it or not for you. So. This is not a high value MUDS bundle that a lot of people are going to care about. This is a very niche MUDS bundle that almost nobody is going to care about. But regardless, let's take a closer look at it. So let's go over the pricing here first. And with the, the MUDS bundles, you know, there's the pick three choice pack and then the mega bundle. If you're not familiar with how MUDS bundles work, I do have a guide explaining them, which I'll have linked down below. But for the pick three choice pack, this has your standard pricing of 29,500 Zen at its base cost. And when this bundle drops on console tomorrow on August 8th, there will be an introductory 50% discount running up through August 22nd. That 50% discount will take it down to 14,750 Zen, which is just under 150 US dollars. And of course there is a mega bundle. Now the cost of this in the blog is incorrect. This is a seven item MUDS bundle, so the cost is a little bit lower at 50,000 Zen. And with the introductory 50% discount, that will go down to 25,000 Zen or $250. Not really worth it. Most of these MUDS bundles are not really worth the, the cost associated with them. But in this case, especially, that mega bundle just does not seem anywhere near worth it to me. And if you're not interested in any of the ships, the consumable options that you have here are a 9-pack of experimental ship upgrades, a 2-pack of T6 ship coupons, a 10-pack of ultimate tech upgrades, or a 16-pack of elite bridge officer training tokens. And next up, I want to do a quick rundown on each of the ships here. Now I'm going to just do a quick glance at the stats if you're looking for any specific information on hull modifiers, impulse modifier, stuff like that. I will have links to their wiki pages down below. But we're going to start off here with the Saturn Intel Science Spearhead. This has a 4-3 weapon setup, and it is able to use dual cannons or dual heavies. Being a science ship, it does, of course, have a secondary deflector. You've got two engineering consoles, five science, and four tack at its base configuration. Once you take it up to X2, you can, of course, get it up to two universals also. For the bridge officer setup here, you have a Commander Science with Intel, a Lieutenant Commander TAC, Lieutenant Commander Universal, a Lieutenant Engineer, and an Ensign Universal with Pilot. So you've got a Commander Intel and an Ensign Pilot. The, the Ensign Pilot, it would be, the ship would be better if that secondary spec seat was a Lieutenant or Lieutenant Commander. The, the Ensign Pilot doesn't really give you room to really do too much with the the pilot there so it is the the only science spearhead that has a commander intel and any secondary pilot seating but i think we do have better options out there for the science spearheads nowadays and the one that i think most of you are the most familiar with from the the past year or so is the Chekhov Intel Science Warship, which is available right in the C store for 30 bucks. This has also a Commander Science with Intel, but it has a secondary temporal seat that is a Lieutenant Commander. So I think if you're looking to do most of the traditional like Psy builds that people would do on a Science Spearhead or Warship, 
I, I think the Chekhov is just straight up a better platform. The Lieutenant Commander Temporal is going to enable many more opportunities for you versus the Ensign Pilot on the Saturn. And the only thing that the Saturn really has going for it is that as a 32nd century ship, it has an innate uh, 32nd century battle cloak, whereas the Chekhov just has a normal cloak, and normal cloaks are pretty much worthless in the current state of the game. So, you know, just from the stats side of things, the, the Saturn, it's, it's a capable ship, but there are more capable platforms that are much more affordable in the, the current state of the game. Now for the accessories, the, the main draw to going for the Saturn is the console, the Chakron projector. This has passives on it for plus 41.8 Starship Hull Pen and Shield Pen. And the clicky here will launch a Chakram projector, which will chase the nearest foe for 45 seconds, deal some kinetic damage to foes within five kilometers of the Chakram projector, and will apply a kinetic debuff of minus 35. So the main draw to getting this ship is to use this console on a support build that is trying to help someone that is using torpedoes. And it is a it is a nice debuff, but it's not the largest kinetic debuff we have out there. And there's a lot of other debuff that you can get nowadays. So I would say that if you're really into torp support stuff, which is legitimately probably about five to ten people in the, the current DPS scene, then maybe the console would appeal to you. But most likely, especially with Type 7s existing now, you have so much debuff that a console that is this expensive that's only giving minus 35 debuff probably isn't something you're going to care too much about. And there is a neat visual for this console, which I'll show you here. It is a neat disc effect around your ship. And you can see the damage from it isn't anything super, super crazy, but this thing does last for a very long time. It's a really neat ring effect like you would see around Saturn. So visually, you know, if you're looking for something that looks cool, this this certainly looks interesting and it will fly around and chase your foes, but don't expect too much from it damage wise. And the final thing for the Saturn here is the Starship Trait Automated Triage. If you or an ally within a five kilometers of you drop below 50% hull capacity, this trait will immediately restore 10% of the target's maximum hull and then an additional 25% over the following seconds. The version of the tooltip that I have here is from 2021 and says that that's either over five seconds or over 10. So I don't know the, the correct number here. If you know, please let me know down below. This by default has a lockout of 60 seconds, but activating science team or any Intel bridge officer ability will reduce the lockout by 10 seconds per activation. So basically, Every time this activates, it's healing 35% of the, the target's hull. So if you're on a very high hull capacity build uh, for, for yourself and you're on a heavy tank, the, this trait may be cool for you. I think that you probably see more use out of this in PvP than PvE. In PvE, I don't really think that this trait would be one of the, the top ones to, to slot for a tank or survivability focused setup. It's, it's certainly not the worst trait out there but I don't think it's really anything to go too crazy about, at least from a PVE point of view. And the next ship is the Mars Pilot Escort, and I do happen to have both this and the United Earth Defense Force vessel, so I can show you how they actually look and how they fly around. So this is a pilot ship, and it does have some neat animations when you're using the pilot maneuvers. So being 32nd century, it's got those floaty bits and you can see that they have an interesting animation when you use the pilot abilities. I'll show you that one here again. So really cool animation there. And let me show you what happens when you go backwards. Give it a couple seconds and I'll show you it going forward. So that's the pilot animations here, and 
You guys have probably seen this ship before. This is one of the more popular ships from this bundle. Now, heading over to the stats of it, let me pull up the bridge officer's setup also. So you have a 5-2 weapon setup plus an experimental weapon. You have 3-inch consoles, 3 science, and 5 tac. Once you take it up to X2, you would also have 2 universal consoles. And given that this is a 32nd century uh, ship, it does also have an innate battle cloak. For the bridge officer setup, you have a commander tack with pilot, a lieutenant commander engineer, a lieutenant science, lieutenant tack, and then a lieutenant universal with intel. So you don't have as much flexibility with the bridge officer setup as you would see on other ships because this Lieutenant Universal is effectively always just going to be used for Intel abilities. So it is a better spec combo or a higher quality spec combo than what we saw on the Saturn, but it's still not the, the greatest out there. There are better ships with a pilot and Intel spec combo. A good example would be the legendary Jemadar attack ship, which you can get in the Sea Store. So it's not a bad bridge officer setup and the, the ship performs perfectly fine. It, it is also able to use the older uh, pilot escort consoles from the original pilot escorts from back in the day. So if you're a fan of those consoles, if you're a fan of pilot ships, this ship will probably appeal to you. Okay, so next up, I wanna take a look at the accessories that you get with the Mars. And we're gonna start off here with the experimental weapon, the subspace pocket projector. So this experimental weapon, if I was to summarize it, it sucks. You should not use this thing. It's got a very short range. You can't even fire it if you're more than five kilometers away from your foe. And the kinetic damage it does, which has no shield pen, will be reduced as soon as you are more than a kilometer away from your foe. So not really a great experimental weapon. Um, it does have a slow effect, if that's of interest to you. But if you're looking for a good experimental weapon to use damage-wise, the, the hexacannons that we just got with the Achilles and that are going to be arriving on console later this month, those are much, much more powerful. The, the hexacannons are right up there with the uh, the plasma bombardier off the Gorn Hunter as the, the best experimental weapons in the game. So the, this subspace pocket projector, you're not getting anywhere near that level of damage. The, this thing just simply isn't good. So I will show you the visual of it, though. So I'm going to shoot my secondary account here with it. Warning. Ship is under attack. Target left shield, shield has failed. failed. Hull integrity below 75%. Yeah, that's... That sucks. The next up is going to be the console. This is the subspace cavitation matrix. Passives for plus three current and maximum engine subsystem power. And plus 9.5%. Cat 1, all weapon damage perverse foes within 5 kilometers. This is going to give you a speed and turn buff, and it will deal some heavy kinetic damage based on proximity. Uh, so plus 50 to 200% flight turn rate and flight speed increases over duration. Will detonate after 15 seconds or if a foe is within 2 kilometers of your forward arc. Upon detonation, does up to 51k kinetic damage to foes within 5 kilometers. Damage reduced with distance beyond one kilometer and will shut their engine subsystem offline for a couple seconds. So this is a like the experimental weapon where if you're too far away from your foe, it's not going to do that much. So let's take a look at it. Warning. Ship is under attack. I'm going to get within two kilometers, let it do its thing. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, where's the Picard facepalm uh, clip that right now? Moving on to the Starship trait, improve lock trajectory. So while this trait is slotted, the recharge time of lock trajectory is reduced to zero, allowing the ability to be immediately re-engaged after it is turned off. In addition, uh, while this is up, um, it is also going to help reduce the recharge time of rapid fire and scatter volley and pilot bridge officer abilities uh, when you damage a foe with energy weapons in your forward arc. So the, this cooldown reduction, it's, it's cool, but it's not going to be that major. 
Um, the big thing here is if you like lock trajectory, this is allowing you to have lock trajectory up the entire time. If you're not familiar with lock trajectory, the way it works is you hit it and it's going to keep you going the way that you were when you hit it, but you can now spin freely around going in the direction you were going when you hit it. And with the straight slotted, you can go right back into it as soon as you're out of it. So if that's an ability that you actually like to use, then, you know, this this may be of interest to you. But uh, to me, the, the accessories from this uh, are terrible. And the final ship I want to take a look at is the United Earth Defense Force vessel. So while this is a 32nd century ship like the two others, if you guys recall from that season of Discovery, Earth at the time was not part of the Federation because of the burn. And regardless of what you think of that storyline, what that means for this ship is because this was an Earth specific ship, it does not have an innate battle cloak. So that is one thing about this ship that is a bit annoying. But the, this ship has been a very good performer over the years. This was one of the top torpedo platforms prior to the Eagle being introduced into the game. Now that the Eagle exists, though, if you're looking to do anything high end with torpedoes, the Eagle is by far the, the best option to go with because the console on the, the Eagle enables the Eagle to fire torpedoes up to four times faster than what something like this United Earth Defense Force vessel can do. So it's still a capable platform. It's still able to do torp stuff, um, but you can also use it as a tank or just as a general damage based build or whatever. Um, so let's go over the, the stats here. Let me pull the bridge officer setup up. You've got a 4-4 weapon set up. It is a warship with the, the master reconfiguration here, basically. So you've got plus 5 ac, uh, plus 15 crit severity, plus 2.5 crit chance, and plus 10% cat 1 for kinetic and energy damage. Uh, for the console setup, you've got 3 inch, 3 psi, and 5 tac. And once you take it up to X2, 2 universals. For the bridge officer setup, you have a commander tac with command a lieutenant commander engineer with command, a lieutenant science, and then one of the nice things with this ship is that it's one of the few ships in the game that has a second commander rank seat. But in order to get that extra commander seat, you're giving up a fifth bridge officer. So you have a universal commander, which means that this is a very flexible platform. So you can set it up to be two commander tacks if you want. And if you're looking to do a tanking setup with this, this is the only ship out there that can do suppression barrage three on the commander command seat here. And then like a reverse shield polarity three over on the, the engineer or the, over on the universal, if you make this an engineer, or if you want to do a grav well, you could also do a grav well three here with the science and still have your suppression barrage beta three or whatever. So it does have some interesting functionality. It's not necessarily the top performer right now for any play style, but there are instances uh, like for an HSC focused tank where this setup may be of interest to you because having suppression barrage three plus the gravel three could be of great benefit in that environment. But it's a pretty neat, neat setup there. It would be nice if the secondary spec seat was a different specialization. But I think overall, the, the ship and the bridge officer setup are able to work quite well. Now, let's take a look at the accessories here. And we're going to start off with the Starship trait, which is interlaced emitters. So what this does is bridge officer shield heals provide additional shield benefits. The target for six seconds when activating bridge officer shield heals plus 20% shield hardness automatically redistribute shield facings and immunity to shield drains. So if you're doing a shield tanking build, or if you're looking to just buff your shields up as far as possible, this is a trait that probably would be of interest to you. And then we have the console. This is a mobile defense net. Passives on this are plus five max shield power and plus 12.5% maximum shield capacity. So more shield buffs. And the clicky here is the mobile defense net, which is a sustained shield protection, or it's going to provide sustained shield protection in the sphere behind you. 
So to yourself, when you activate this console, your turn rate will be set to a max of six, flight speed max of 12. It will disable pilot maneuvers and rock and roll because you can use this console on any ship you want. And to self analyze in five kilometer sphere centered 3.5 kilometers behind you, it sets default shield bleed through to 0% plus 50% shield hardness. It'll restore some shields each second and automatically redistribute shield facings. So again, if you're someone doing a shield tanking setup, the, the accessories this thing has may appeal to you. And the visual for the console is here. So a pretty big area gets that uh, shield buff. And again, when you are in this mode, you are slowed down quite a bit and it will persist around you. So if you move around, the uh, the effect of it is going to move around also. So if you're really into the like buffing shields up again, this ship and its accessories may appeal to you. And to wrap things up, this MUDS bundle is really not something that most of you should be concerned with. If you're dropping this type of money into the game, I think that there are plenty of other MUDS bundles that will give you much more value for your account, like the Disco Inferno bundle and the Dread Through the Ages bundles that dropped earlier this year. But this bundle just really doesn't have much going for it value-wise, unless you are specifically looking to get one of these ships on a bunch of characters on your account. So that's my thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think of it down below. Um, but again, I, I just really don't think most of you need to worry about this. I think you're best to just save your money for something else. And that's going to be it for today. As always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. See you guys around.